and 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 really really prominent ones. I would say Andrew, you're right there with DJ Diesel himself, the great Shaquille O'Neal, who will be live at Harris tomorrow at 12 noon. Shaq, what's up, brother? Is this John and Alan? <laughs> This is Andrew. No, Are you kidding Alan me? Iverson, yes. Hey, Alan made, Iverson, his, made, new, his new partner. By the way, you made Andrew, my partner who you have not met, you made Andrew cry when he was seven years old. Yeah, thanks a lot, dude. Why? Well, uh, I was seven, and the 76ers were in the NBA Finals. So I either have to thank you or ask for your apology because you made me cry, but you also taught me a life lesson because it was my first time no. ever experiencing happiness, but also my first time experiencing uh, the downfall and hatred of sports. So thanks a lot, Jack. No, I didn't make you cry. The kid made you cry. <laughs> <laughs> he certainly did. He certainly did. How are you, my brother? brother? You're coming to town brother. tomorrow. Yes, I am. How are you, brother? Uh, I'm doing, doing. I'm stronger every day, getting good, healthier good. and stronger every day, and uh, and feeling good about it. And uh, we're all excited because Paul George is coming to town. So we're excited you're coming to town tomorrow. But Paul George yes. is coming to town, and now yeah, we're thinking good. things might be different next year for us. That's going to make your team very effective. How if, e how effective? If if no no if. Uh, listen, I love, I love playoff P, but playoff P hasn't been playoff P since the Miami series. In my opinion, uh, there's no disrespect to Paul, but, you know, when you, uh, can do the things that you can do, you're expected to 26, 27 average that in the playoffs, and every now and then he'll have a good game, and then the next game he won't have a good game, so. No, him and Mr. Embiid and Mr. Maxey, you got to throw him in and make they have to be super effective in order to get the championship. And I know they're going for Boston because Boston has the, had the easiest run to a championship ever. So I'm looking forward to it. And uh, I actually hope Gareth P, Embiid, and Maxey does well. To your point about Paul George, we always say how this is the best team that Embiid's ever had around him. This has been, I, mean, I feel like we've been doing this for four or five seasons now. Is this the best team that Paul George has been a part of? I know he played with Kawhi Leonard and James Harden. That's not nothing to sneeze at, but he's got a big man like Joel Embiid, and he's got the guard like Tyrese Maxey. In terms of his play style, is this the best fit that Paul George has had? I mean, I, I, I would have to agree with you, yes. Uh, playing with the best big man, well, one of the best big men in the league. And, you know, the, the window is closing for him. Uh Maxie has emerged. The unfortunate thing is somebody's going to have to sacrifice just a little. And Maxie probably going to have to go back to being the Maxie that he was. But he still should have that aggressive spirit and still play the, the same way and not wait for anybody. So, you know, either it's going to be the old school one-two punch or it's going to be the new school big three. We shall see. Watching the Olympic team. And not only watching Joel Embiid, but watching the Olympic team as a whole. What did you think as a gold medalist yourself? Thank you, Steph Curry. <laughs> it's the truth. Thank you, yeah. Steph Curry. I appreciate you, Steph Curry. You know, John, I don't like going by ifs, but what if you don't hit four threes in a row? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you lose. I mean, the fact that, the fact yeah, that they were so. trailing Serbia, yes. to me, pissed me off. And people were like, oh, my gosh, it didn't matter. They won the game. I'm like, it's an embarrassment yeah, that they were trailing yeah. like that. Yeah, we, we should. You know, I, I uh, said the other day, if we don't win by 20 and 30, I wouldn't be impressed. Yeah, we won the gold medal, but you just gave all these countries confidence. And guess what? It's our last gold medal. Would you like me to explain? Yes. Next Olympics, no LeBron. Next Olympics, no Steph. Next Olympics, no KD. Next Olympics, no Joel and B. No more gold for the U.S. Well, Joel might pick another country to play for. That's my point. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, Shaq, Carmelo Anthony always talks about how the gold medal is, you know, he would never trade that away for an NBA championship. Now, easy for him to say because he never won an NBA championship. I'm curious, because you've done both, uh, what was winning the gold medal like for you? Well, I won one in 94 where I was an integral part of the team. In 96, I was an integral part of the team. And then the final game, 
Larry Wilkins comes to me and said, this is probably David Robinson's last one, so he's going to get to start and play most of the game. I didn't even, I only played 15 seconds. I drove home after the ceremony because it was in Orlando, and I threw my gold medal out the window. Wow. True story. True story. Did you go back and, I, and get it, though? Tell the no, end of that story. I did not. I did not. Because remember, you know, the game was at night, and uh, so I left for probably about 11. By the time I hit Valdosta, it was probably like 2. But yeah, I just, I just took it off and threw it away. And you usually, and got, he, you usually get pulled over in Valdosta, Georgia, if I, I remember well. Because, John, you know me. If I didn't earn it, I don't yes. want it. You know, I felt like I didn't earn it. I felt like Lenny Wilkins didn't do me a solid, so I threw it away. And there's some, there's some guy it. walking around this side of the road that picked up a gold medal and has no idea that it was Shaquille O'Neal. Off 75 South. Know, right? No, it's probably be- still there. <laughs> you know, it's just a matter of trying to find it. When you are, yeah, when you're a competitor like that, and and you look at, you know, you never want to be the old head, and you never ever want to do that. You always try to respect players of every single generation. But when you watch the NBA today, do you are you proud of the product that they're putting out there? I'm proud of the money that they're making. I know that is the businessman. Yeah, I was looking at salaries the other day. Wow, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm. I'm I'm jealous. I'm jealous and I'm flabbergasted. Am I proud of the product? I the only thing that disappoints me, John, is why does every team play the same way? That that like that that, that right there irritates me. I remember we had to play Utah, they had a whole different offense, uh, Chicago had the triangle and then you gotta deal with the team and then the Knicks played a certain way and 76 to play. Now every team plays the same way. That frustrates me, and I think the product, I think it weakens the product. Yeah, I remember mm-hmm. the, the Sixers, when they had Al Horford, it was Ben Simmons, oh. Al Horford, and Joel Embiid, and they still tried playing a Euro style of basketball where they were chucking up threes. By the way, Josh Richardson was their two guard, and Tobias Harris, another <laughs> non-three point. They had four, five guys that did not shoot threes, and they still tried playing the Euro style of basketball. Yeah, it's just, I don't, I don't, I... Um, and then I asked coaches, why do you all play the same way? Oh, times have changed. We'll change them back, damn it. Hey, uh, your Dallas Cowboys, by the way, they look like a dumpster fire. Just want to give you, I just, I, just, I just want to, I want to free up some of your Sundays in the fall so you don't have to waste time watching them. In 2024, dumpster fire is slang for a uh, Super Bowl team. Thank you, John. <laughs> you, you might need to, seriously. How do you have your three highest paid players and you being one of those caliber players? How do you have your three highest paid players not locked up after this year and all of your coaching staff not locked up after this year? Come on, you got Jerry Jones' cell phone number. I know you do. You should talk some sense into the man. First of all, we will get it done when it needs to be done. And we're going to beat your Eagles. You think so, eh? We beat you all last year. You haven't won. You, 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 what, you won last year. Look, you have not won many bets, Eagles, Cowboys, with me. Didn't we beat you last year? Yeah, okay. It was a split. We're, it was a split. Okay, well, it's a split. It's all right, and you won the division, and you did, and then you did what Dallas does in the playoffs. Yeah, true, 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 true. I cannot, I cannot argue you that know, fact. You know, when uh, the Eagles won the Super Bowl, talk about what kind of a good man Shaquille O'Neal is. He had a bet with me that he would dress as an eagle, cover his body in feathers, and then stroll around the battery and in downtown in Atlanta yeah. and do that. And he dressed covered in feathers and went around and was an eagle. I mean, you paid off. You're a man. Uh-huh. Of, yeah. uh-huh. <laughs> I don't think eagles make that sound, but it was, it was good. It was one of, my, one of my favorite memories of being together with you. And I had so many, and I had so many pillow feathers in my face. I was like, what am I doing? What's, uh, what, uh, what, what is your future like? Other than DJ Diesel, who, by the way, tomorrow at Harris. By the way, I see today there's only like 20 tickets available. So, I mean, it's going to be a big oh, show. And are, are two-year-olds allowed? Because I'm, I'm right across the bridge in Brigantine. <laughs> no. I can bring my two-year-old. No, you cannot. <laughs> you, can't bring, you can't bring Cooper. Now, that, that when, you, when you hear Sal Chunas, my partner Andrew's name, you, 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 you have much love for Lithuanian basketball players? I do. Uh, every, every guy that comes from Europe, I appreciate the game because they bring fundamentals to the game. And as you saw in the Olympics, fundamentals is about to overtake talent. You know, for so long, talent, you jump higher, you run faster, you win, but 
If you look at the top ten players in, in the league now, five half of them are from overseas. So I love Lithuanian players. I love Croatian players. I've always said if you got a bitch in your last name, you can shoot that bitch. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Sabonis, Valanciunas, Ilgalskis. Who's the one that you hated the most playing up against? This is this is personal for me. This is good. Ilgalskis. Explain. Seven four, long, all the moves up and under, and to shoot the jumper. And if you try to challenge the jumper, he could put it on the floor and go to the basket. He's the happiest by, by, the, by the time I started playing some bonus, he was old, so you know, it really didn't count. Because I saw what he did to Dave Robinson in the 1984 Olympics. I really didn't like him for that. And then one time I went to, I, I, I actually had an appearance for Reebok in Lithuania, and there was an article that came out, and Sabonis said that he would dog me out. So I said, okay, we'll see. It. And he came to Portland. So I've always had that, that uh, uh, self-hatred for him. You've been a partial owner of an NBA team. If an NBA team came to Vegas, you want in, right? Uh, yes, I would love to be in. Cause you'd be, would, would, you, would you want a, uh, a day-to-day role, or would you no. rather just be an owner? I'd just rather be an owner, rather just show up at the game and sit in my suite, you, uh, lovely wife, your lovely daughter, my kids, and just have a great time. I, it's, uh, my, my daughter be all in. She's, you know that, that baby's 21 at Christmas. What? Yes. It's amazing. She's 21 Hold soon. On. What? She's 21 soon. She's going to graduate in May. I used to, I used to take her peanut butter jelly out of her lunchbox. That's <laughs> 21. Yes. I mean, so, that means she's going to want to come to Shaq's DJ parties when, you know, next year, when Uncle oh, Shaq yeah. comes through town. You know, she'll be coming down. And are you going on vacation? Yeah, I, I'm going. Uh, I'm going down. The, I, we go down the beach next weekend. Oh, we nice! Go down next weekend. And besides, you don't want me at one of your DJ shows. So, and, I mean, even uh, though, and, will you be playing the WBCs tomorrow? For those yes, that are, you were, will you tell everybody yeah. what the WBCs are? WBCs are white boy classics. And Andrew, I do not want to see you at the beach with all that damn back hair. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I'll, I'll shave it if I do come by, though. All no, right? no, no. No back now, hair, Andrew. Now, you know, I thought Haley was going to come. Who Haley, who runs our YouTube feed, she loves to do these speech shows, and she's always down there. And then today she tells me they haven't even bought tickets. I'm like, are you kidding come me? On. Seriously. Come on, Haley. I mean, seriously. What is she doing with her Where, money? Where's she at? Are you there, Haley? Uh, Haley's got to come quick and get on mic here, Haley, because, I mean, seriously, how can you be? how can you not have tickets? To this event, if you want to, when DJ Diesel comes into Atlantic City, yeah, you got, you got you to be right. And by this. the way, you'll be back at. Uh, you're, are you back at Encore later on this summer? Do you have your headsets on, Haley? Do you have? A, you're back at Encore this summer, right? In Vegas. Yes, I'm going. yes. that's and always, Haley. That's always loving. All right, Haley, he's talking to you. If you want, you oh, you can use my headsets for a second. All right, she's all right, she's, she's transferring on over here, Shaq. All right, go ahead. Hi, Shaq. Hello, Hi, Haley. How are you? Good. How are you? And who are you coming with? I am coming with my friend Rotana. Okay, well, I'll have a guy. <laughs> Sounds right up your alley, Shaquille. Yes, I will have a guy named Logan called John and get your information. You don't need to buy tickets. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. See I that? appreciate it, Shaq. There you go. How about that? A personal there invite from Shaq. From DJ now, now, Shaq, listen, I was I was at John's ceremony when he was inducted into the Temple Hall of Fame. It was a beautiful ceremony, and you left a beautiful message for him, and that's great. But I got to ask you, man, I've done 110 shows now with John. Is there anything I need to know about John, not necessarily the, the great things about John that I need to keep an eye on? Well, well, the best thing about John is he's honest. Before me and him became partners, he met me at my hookah spot, and he had a briefcase, and he said, I don't care who you are. If you're not going to take it serious, we're not going to do it. And I was like, well, hello to you too, sir. And we had a great podcast. Uh, we had uh, I, six six good years together. Yes, he's 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 honest, he's funny, and he's not sensitive. So in this business, if you become sensitive, then you got a whole other bunch of problems. That's what I love and respect about John, and he has a great sense of humor. The girls say hello and send their love, and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, Shaquille. And John, teach him about borderline. Uh, oh yeah, well yeah. Do I, you want to know what borderline is? Yes, please. Every week we would find stuff that was. I, Shaq, do you believe we would be canceled in today's culture? 
No, because me and you are on the platform. You it's, can't cancel owners. That's good. That's yeah, true. that's it. And when you have yeah. Shaq really own the platform, I was, you know, just, I was sort of a, a tenant. By the way, I just work. realized something. Back to back days. Chuck was on Charles yesterday. Was on yesterday. He was on yesterday with Mike Missinelli. We got you on today. Oh. 